Hello there, Facebook Live viewers. My name is Tim Kornowski. You probably already know that, but in case you're brand new, my name is Tim Kornowski, and we are filming live out of Algoma, Wisconsin. You say, where's Algoma? Well, let's see. If I were to hold my hand up, probably this side in the mirror, this would be Wisconsin. The thumb, this is Green Bay, home of the Green Bay Packers. We're uh, about on the other side where the Lake Michigan is. And uh, that's where Algoma is. It's a great little town, about 3,000 people. And uh, it's a beautiful place to live and raise a family and make art pieces in your art studio. So I'm gonna continue adding a little bit of, this is simple Sharpie fine point. You can see it's backwards. I'm not left-handed. That's just the way that the, uh, the video shows a mirror image. So this foreground is a very, uh, very shadowy area. I'm just going to add a little bit of, if the tip gets a little bit, you know, waxy, you can just kind of wipe it off. So we're continuing the work on the country fall scene. Of course, as it is fall time here in uh, Kiwanee County and in Door County, where I mostly live and work, there's a lot of color changing going on up here right now. And I want to put a little more detail in this background area. It's not like blah to me, but it feels that way a little bit because the picture's not finished yet. I put about an hour into it last night, as you can, if you've seen the video from last night we had. We started out with just a couple of black lines on the paper and then just added a lot of color from there. I like trees because they kind of had a, a mind of their own there. They're random, and they kind of blow in the breeze. I'm gonna kind of thicken up some of these dark shadowy areas here. There's a variety of ways I can do that. You can see I'm kind of using up and down strokes right now with my pencil here, and that's how I'm gonna really dig into the paper and get those dark shadows coming out darker the shadow, the brighter the highlights are going to be. Like this right here. Obviously, you can go over it like this. But also, it's the darkness here that's going to bring the light out. Maybe we'll come to a completion on this picture tonight. We'll see. No rush to it, you know. I'm not in a time constraint like normal TV programs would be. Like, I'd have 22 minutes in a half hour slot or 44 and in a one hour slot, which is really nice because I can take my time, I can take as long as I want talking about the art as I work on it. I'm using the color sharpener, not the other pencil sharpener that you know you can typically use. And of course there's going to be some some leaves on the ground so we'll we'll use a little sienna brown for that fall time's a beautiful time great time to take your family in the vehicle and go for a drive just take yourself and enjoy the uh, beauty of nature it's a great time to take it all in Many times I'll put on some uh, classical music during that process. I'll listen to a little Vivaldi, Four Seasons, or something like that. 
whatever works for you. See if I can give the impression of leaves kind of stranded here on the edge of the road. That's what I'm going for. Just here and there. Maybe this is a an old oak tree towering over the entire scene. Now it's time to work in some of these colors that I'm looking forward to in the background. I don't want it too dark because what's happening in the background is the, there's a lot of atmosphere and so what happens is you can't can't see all the details. They fade away in the in the backdrop. So we don't want to get too dark or even too light in the background. But better to stay lighter than darker and not near as many details either. Start sharing too many details, you'll you'll make your background look like a foreground and then it'll be kind of funny. Hey Jennifer Burns, how you doing? See my wife's on there? Hello to my wife. My wife's my biggest fan. She gives me good feedback. Sometimes you just need honest feedback if something doesn't look right. Somebody can tell you that doesn't look right. That's important. Typically I'll get that with portraiture because portraiture tends to really stretch an artist no matter who you are. John Singer Sargent, most famous artist in America, has passed away many years ago. He'd almost be considered an old master now, I suppose. He was so good. He said that the uh, definition of a great portrait is there's something wrong with the mouth. It's kind of a funny quote from him. But he had his you know, his his difficulties doing portraiture and and people being unhappy with how it looked. So he had to deal with that too. A little bit of Sienna Brown just kind of popping in and out here. Bring this blue up a little bit and let it fade. It's more of an atmospheric blue that's coming up underneath the trees in the background. That's the impression I want to give. I think every day we give people impressions, how we feel, what we say, how we look at life, everything we have on the inside of us comes out in the open. You really can't hide much of anything. It'll it'll come out sooner or later. Like to add a little orange. There's a orange you always think of orange in terms of, you know. Those are happy trees. Thank you, Perry. We were just talking about Bob Ross last night and the genius of Bob Ross, how he could just imagine things and just start cranking it out on canvas. He would do probably eight broadcasts in a day, eight paintings a day, and then just give them away as a gift to people and donations and stuff. He didn't sell those pictures on Joy of Painting. He sold his art instructional videos and supplies. And of course, the, his style took the America by storm at that time. Now you can't find a uh, Bob Ross original for any less than about 10, 15,000. And that's a more basic one, not the sofa sized ones that I'm sure he made, or just very large ones. Typically uh, around uh, fall time, you think of the color orange, at least I do, I think of pumpkins. I think of orange leaves. My favorite ones are the bright red ones. Thanks, Steve, appreciate it. I'm actually using the viewfinder to not just look at your kind comments, but also see a mirror of the actual image. I 
I do like to look at my art in the mirror, not because I'm so enamored with myself or what I've created, but it shows things I want to I want to improve or I want to do. It helps actually get a fresh eye. Sometimes if you take a photograph of your art, that will help a lot too. Sounds kind of silly, but it works. Especially if you're doing portraiture and you want to see where you're missing it. Listening to some Bach right now. Uh, his cello suites. Good stuff for, uh, you know, just contemplative music, I guess you could say. Yeah, thanks, Alan. Appreciate it. Good seeing you on here. Feel free to stop in and pop in here and there and I'll, I'll make sure I post the finished picture so you can see it as a as a photo of it here uh, on Facebook. This is simply a drawing made with Sharpie permanent marker and um, some Prismacolor colored pencils. So I'm just kind of demonstrating a technique I've never actually done before. I, I was kind of pioneering it a little bit for myself with a portrait of my dog Samson that I did here on Facebook not too long ago, about a month ago. That was with a, just a simple pen. This is actually a marker so that I can get thicker and, and deeper shadows and like I can build up shadows right here in the, in the corner here. put some more depth into it. Now it gets a little more difficult. You want to lay all of your all that you can in uh, ahead of time because at some point you won't be able to uh, lay that marker down anymore because it won't go over the top. Thanks Alan. It's good. It's good music, isn't it? You won't be able to lay that uh, uh, Sharpie over the top of this colored pencil because it's so strong and thick. So you want to do as much as you can before you start throwing the colors down if, if you would like to give this a shot at home. And this is nice, it's non-toxic, you're not going to have to get anything on your fingers. I want to really darken up this foreground so I'm just using some black here, pretty simple. This uh, scene kind of reminds me of Door County, it's a beautiful place. I visit very often, as I'm not far from it as we speak. I try not to use black, except when I need to. Right now it's just to get the colors a little bit darker. You know, technically you don't really see black and, and white outside. You see colors, you don't really see black. You can see a dark a very dark blue or dark violet in a shadow, but it's not actually black, even though it looks like it to your human eye. When your eyes adjust, or for example, if you look, you're standing inside of a house, and you look out the window, the darkest shadow outside looks light blue, and you go outside and your eyes adjust, that shadow looks black. That's just how your eyes adjust to the light, because it's so bright outside. So I want this spot, this spot, and a little bit here to really pop out. So that's what I'm kind of planning here. I like to play other kinds of music too, like jazz. I like John Coltrane, Miles Davis, but Facebook won't let me do that. They don't like it when I do that. Something about copyrights, I guess. I understand. Of course, it's just background music too, so. 
But I shouldn't complain. I'm just happy that I can use Facebook to reach all you special people out there. Nice to meet all you new folks. Howells, I think that would be uh, probably uh, related to, is that Joy, Pastor Sandy's daughter? I'm sure that's uh, someone you know very well. I like Facebook because it connects a lot of the people that maybe you haven't even met, but you're from the area. Instead of, you know, on Periscope, I tried that for a little while, but I met a lot of people I didn't know. They just kind of come and go, whereas on Facebook, it's more of a community. So that's what I like about it. Facebook Live, I think, is one of the greatest inventions of the, the 2000s, I guess you could say. What's nice about using these colored pencils is you can just keep layering them over and top of each other over and over and over and they, you can just really lay it on thick maybe you can't paint with it or anything but although if you laid this on a canvas it's possible that if you put some thinner into it you might be able to paint with it but that's not the purpose of this broadcast today it's just to demonstrate the use of colored pencil on paper so you want to use a thick paper for it for sure so The way that I scribble into this paper sometimes, it's really, really thick. I could dig a hole right into it. Thank you, Perry. I appreciate you watching. I would take the time to click on this uh, video and watch a little bit, see what's going on. Sometimes I hold a, the pencil like this. Other times I'll actually hold it like this. Hey Sharon, welcome back. Haven't seen you for a while. Sharon is also a, a budding artist herself. Getting pretty good at it too with her colors. This is actually how I hold a brush too when I'm painting. I don't hold a brush like this all the time, I'll actually hold it like this. Hey, how's mom doing? Thank you, very beautiful, she says. Glad you like. She's got a pretty good amount of art in her house that she's collected over the years. It's almost to the point there's there's certain people I, I can't give any more art to because they just don't have any more room. Or the pieces that you give them, you really have to think about it. And make sure that they have space for it. A few people like that in my life. My brother's another one. He only has so much wall space himself. There's been a lot of times where people wanted to buy a piece of art by me and they said, the only problem is it's not the price, it's not what it is. I just don't have room in my house anymore. So some people are pretty overloaded with art. Of course, I don't think you could ever have too much art, but there's only so much wall space. You're welcome, Mom. So I'm using like a violet color to actually work this barn in because it's it's whatever color the shadow is at that moment we're gonna thicken up this orange back here again you don't want to make your colors too bold working in your background so that's why I'm kind of not getting much darker than what I'm doing right now or, or laying it on that thick. My foreground I gotta lay it on really thick and the contrast has to be brights and darks in the, in the uh, I just saw something while I was talking. Again I can use the Facebook viewfinder there 
as a mirror and look into there and see things I want to change. So it's pretty fun. Works good for me too. Good for you because you can kind of watch and see what I'm doing. Make sure I'm doing my job in here in the studio. So at the end of the day I can tell my wife, no I was working, I wasn't just wasting time. Here's a little something to to prove it. So we're uh, working again with Prismacolors as I mentioned. Have a lot of fun with them, you can mix them together. You can get some really powerful effects out of them. Started with a black marker. And I'm adding a little black Prismacolor. I like old picket fences. I just like old stuff. I like it because it has a lot of character to it. It makes you think about who used to live there. and They may not be around anymore, but their mark is still there. I'm just going to throw some really thick, dark lines in here. I feel like i got to beef it up a little bit. Feel free to share this video with anybody, please. I'm not going to fault you for it. If you want to send it to a friend that wants to get back into art. Maybe it's just entertaining, that's quite alright. I'm highly entertained by watching Bob Ross on Netflix with the joy of painting and it's not just the intro song and, and thanks dad appreciate it it's not just the little intro song in there and the way he picks up the big fat brush and puts it on the imaginary canvas I, I just enjoy watching his happy accidents he would talk about no mistakes just happy accidents he'd call them I'm just kind of creating an, like a little bit of an anomaly on the roof here. Old buildings, you know, sometimes they get saggy roofs. And just going to put a little bit of a dip in this road here. A lot of my paintings from Back in the day, when I say back in the day, my teenage years, I learned how to paint in uh, when I was about 12, 13 years old. So it's been about over 20 years now. And, uh, yeah. Hint, hint. Maybe it'd look good on your wall. I'll have to find a frame for it. I'm always looking for frames. Learn how to paint, though, when I was 12 or 13, something like that. A lot of my pictures, I'd mix the colors together together so much that, which was a mistake to do that because everything turns gray. And people don't like necessarily gray pictures. They usually like color, something colorful. And there is art in color and non-color, but why do people enjoy fall so much? Because of the beautiful colors. It looks like explosions on the horizon and in the forest, so. And I like it, I know others like it, so it's fun to reproduce that here on the on the paper. I like uh, drawing nowadays more than I ever have because it's uh, very easy cleanup. All I do is I take this and slap it down on the tray. It's so give me a press. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'll take the frames too, by the way. And it's, it's easier to make drawings because you don't have to uh, deal with so much cleanup and the toxicity of oil paint sometimes. So I'm not against oil painting, but...
used to have the hardest time coming up with price tags for my art, especially because I didn't want to let go of it. It was almost like a selfish thing. Well, then again, I mean, I shouldn't think to myself that my art is so wonderful that I can't let go of it. Or as one artist told me, he said, don't be your own best collector. I always liked that. Kim Wiggins gave me that advice. So nowadays I see beauty in, in, in uh, everybody's art, certainly not just my own. And sometimes I have to look to others for uh, encouragement about what I'm working on or doing because at that moment I just don't see it for whatever reason. Mom says it's sold. Well, I'll, I'll tell Mom to... I'll let her know I'll, I'll make sure I finish it. I have my hopes to uh, actually finish it tonight here on Facebook Live for everybody to actually see it come together, so... thought, actually, that my father and mother-in-law would like this one a lot. Does not surprise me. Actually, Pastor Tom and Stella Terry, they actually live out in a place that's not very different than where Jennifer and I live. We live here in Algoma and they're not too far from here in Kiwani. Hopefully that's okay if I say that. But Kiwani's a beautiful area too. Both are on the water. Come to Algoma and the, yeah, claim it, claim it. Yeah, that's great up here. I'd never go back, I came from Green Bay, and I'd never go back to uh, Green Bay to live. And I know I'll never have to go back. Now, uh, nothing against people who live in Green Bay, but I just, I'm glad I live out in the country now. I know Algoma's a city, but it's it, to me it's still like the country. It's not far from farmland and cows and lots of geese flying around. Auntie likes it more, yeah. Well, there's more of these where, where that came from. Like I was saying before, this is the, I think the uh, first one I've ever done like this, I guess. I've never, uh, I felt impressed just to take a Sharpie and just draw the picture right out on the paper. So that was the first time I've ever done that, and then I just started working the colors in, so kind of a pioneer of a picture for me. So it's fun. I'm enjoying it. It's even more fun to, to see people write in, put a little smiley face on there, and just kind of, even for five minutes, somebody dropping in and checking things out. It's a lot of fun for me to be able to share the art, because what's the purpose of art if I can't share it with somebody? I don't, I don't see a purpose to it. Yeah, it's that song, something about, thank God I'm a country boy. I'm a country boy now, I wasn't a country boy at one time. I remember when I first came to the country, I, I got scared because a mouse came in the building and I took off like a jackrabbit. Well, that wasn't very manly. Now I, if I got to kill something, I kill it. I don't start running away from it. And I like working outside. Working outside is great. That's some of my favorite work, is being outdoors, cutting stuff with a chainsaw or whatever. Yeah, I'm glad you like the colors there. I think the part I'm gonna work on the most then, in terms of completing this piece, is, is the background. I wanna blend some more colors in there. I always like the uh, the movies where there's a guy just taking an axe and just chopping up firewood. I'll take old pallets and cut them up with a skill saw. And just, uh, you know, they don't burn for very long, but talk about free firewood, right? So, I burned up so much pallet wood in the last few years. My fire pit is one of those that stands off the ground. I think I burned a hole in it. I added some uh, some metal to the bottom of it to beef it up, and thank God I did that, or else it'd be junk. I get some pretty raging fires going on in that thing at times.
probably shouldn't get too strong with it because I am in city limits, so. But I think I can have chicken. If I want chicken running around, I could do that all I want. I don't know, we'll get there. We gotta take care of the dog and cat first. So I tell the kids, you want more animals, take care of that dog and cat first. Hey Monica, how's it going? Uh, good times, good times. Because this is a colored pencil, I don't like spraying fixative on, on anything like this. It's an actual drawing, so it'll sit under a glass, just like a print like Charles Peterson, let's say. He he does a lot of uh, watercolor, watercolor painting, so his stuff will sit under glass. And I've never heard anyone complain about, about that. Oil paintings you don't put under glass. But if you ever want to take a picture of your art, you always have to remember, before you frame it, take a good photo of it. That's what I like to do. There's been times where I've painted pictures on the street, just right out on the street corner, and people buy them before the paint even dries, but then I never get a photo of it. Because I'm not thinking about that, I'm thinking about taking care of somebody at the moment. So my wife says, hey, can I see that? Can I see your picture you worked on? I don't have, I don't even, I know what it looks like in my mind, that's all I know. So if anyone out there ever has a Kornowski original, which name I got from my father-in-law there, Kornowski Originals, if you ever have one, post it on post it on our page for fun. Especially one that you you think I might have never have taken a photo of. Thinking of one guy from Romania who was uh, bought a picture from me. Pretty neat guy. I'm gonna just kind of beef it up here and leave this. I use all kinds of terms. Maybe they don't make sense, maybe they do. Bob Ross, when he'd work on some of his pictures, he'd make sound effects, kind of funny. I get it though, I know what he's doing. It's fall time here in Wisconsin and this is the time to take a drive, to enjoy the beauty that God has made for everybody. You know, it's like, whether people believe in God or not, He made it all. And he still gives it to you to enjoy. Okay. This Prismacolor is so thick. Thanks, Jen. I was going to say my wife, Jennifer, but that's my wife. I don't need to say Jennifer. I just noticed your name on there. Typically, if my wife and I use each other's first names, it's because we're irritated or upset at each other. <laughs> I know I'm in trouble if I hear uh, him and vice versa. Doesn't happen too often though. I'm running out of space in my container for the shavings and I don't have a trash can nearby so I'm using the other side for now. What's nice about white you can really dull things down and mix things together just like using oil pastel same thing I'm gonna bring out a little bit more definition in the background there are a lot of trees back here layering over one another the nice thing about a picture is when you see it, it may take you back to a certain place in your life where you really enjoyed. Maybe it was even a difficult place, but overall when you look back on it, it was like a very special time in your life. 
and I think that's what art does. I've never even been to this place before, but to me it reminds me of something I've been to or a place that I really enjoy. And the thing is, in the middle of winter, when you're sitting in a cabin and, or a house, you know, and it's really cold outside, you can't do much outside, it's fun to look at something that's a little bit more cheery and a little more happy. Yeah, it's beautiful outside right now. It just, it's, it's not happening so fast either where you kind of miss it. Like, it may be real pretty like this for another week or two, so. I strongly recommend anyone that hasn't been to Door County yet, you gotta come up and check it out. It is beautiful. Get some of that blue kicking in there a little bit more. There was a place I lived at once, come to think of it, that was very, very difficult on, on me and, and my family and things we had to go through in life living there. Yet at the same time, we look back at that during the time that we raised our little ones and brought two babies home at that place that it's very uh, cherished in our minds. Yet at the same time, there was a lot of difficulty that we had to deal with in that particular place so but you primarily remember it for the the joy that you had there and the Christmases and the Thanksgivings but you're glad to leave it behind and go forward you know because it's that's what we're meant to do is keep moving forward Kind of edge this out a little bit here. You know, as an artist, you drive around, you look at all the stuff that God's made, and, and you think, boy, if I had time to recreate it all. But you know what? I'm not God. He's God. I'm not going to try to be Him. I'm just going to, as, as I feel led, as an artist, make a picture here or there to really glorify Him. You know, I, even when I go to Pizza Ranch, which is a great little buffet there in Green Bay area, they have right on their board that their mission is to glorify God and what they do, and they use a scripture that says, whatever you eat or whatever you drink, do it all for the glory of God. I think that's true, so that's my mission as an artist. That's why you don't see me doing all kinds of, you know, pictures of nudes and all kinds of things. What, what are you saying, Tim? You know, you can't do a, a nude. Not necessarily, but it, it's not really meant for everybody else to see that. You know, that's really not necessary. Maybe some people would get upset at me, but that's okay. We can agree to disagree, right? I'm also not going to paint scary pictures or things that are meant to, to put fear into people. I'm going to do something that's a blessing to somebody. If I can't do that, then I'm just going to put this stuff down and let somebody else be a blessing. That's why you look at Bob Ross's pictures and it's the joy of painting, not the horror of painting or, or the lewdness of painting, right? There's a lot of art out there today that I think people are starting to become more aware that is that really art or is that just really weird? You know, did somebody just go on an acid trip and, and not come back? You know, so I think that art is supposed to be a blessing, not a curse. Sometimes you do emote, though, through what you're doing. You, it's like journaling. You know, if somebody were to write down what they had gone through, it, it can help somebody. And art can be a therapy in that way, but as we move on, we don't need to keep dwelling on 
on the bad things that happen to us in life because it'll just pull us down and be using our purpose for the wrong reason. <clears throat> Pizza Ranch rocks. Oh yeah. They tend to eat a lot. It adds up on the food bill, doesn't it? That's why you gotta get yourself a Pizza Ranch card and then you get a credit on there every time you go there. It helps. Five bucks here and there. It all adds up. What they need to do at Pizza Ranch is sell t-shirts and hats and stuff. Do some merchandising. Yeah, thanks for that too, by the way. The, the kids had a blast. Had a good time. Good time hanging out with Grandpa and Grandma. It's always party time excellent. gonna work a little bit more green into the background here again I, I don't want to go too much you know you, you need to know when a piece finished is finished and there's an art to just knowing how to start a picture how to create it and how to finish it not get too caught up in the details or whatever A lot of things I believe that go into a piece of art and it's not just what you see visually it's what inspired you in the first place did you get the point across or is it like sometimes we've all done it we're talking we get on a rabbit trail and never come back and we never really get our point across or maybe we say something we just don't say it the right way it doesn't come out right I know everybody feels that way sometimes or sometimes, you know, you know somebody really well, they know what you mean, even though they heard it come out differently or in a certain way. Or like, God forbid, but I'm having a rough moment or something and I say something in a certain way. Well, with art, it's the same way, you know. Everything you're going through at that moment is going to come through. Or uh, the things that you've been through in life will come through in your art. They'll come through in anything you're doing. So... That's what I've noticed. <clears throat> Get a little bit more blue down here in the foreground. Uh, this is ultramarine. Not the strength I'm looking for, so I'm gonna go with violet blue. Yeah, chimney's cool. I like old chimneys like that. Tractor is good time. Kids had fun on the tractor. One of these days I'm gonna get a tractor. It's gonna be fun. Maybe I'll have like a bucket on the front I can dig up stuff with or whatever. Maybe a four-wheeler, that'd be fun. Maybe a four-wheeler with the shovel on the front, that'd be fun too. Now I'm really thinking to myself. A friend of mine the other day, he uh, really blessed me with a nice lawnmower that is uh, self-propelled, so. You know, we just happen to, our our, uh, our lawn isn't big enough that we necessarily need a, a big uh, rider yet. It works fine for what we have. But I tell you what, that thing is great. I can mow my lawn real fast. It keeps up with me so fast that I could almost jog behind it. And it keeps up with me. Pretty cool. It'd be even better if the thing just remote controlled it. You know, you hit the button and there it goes, right? Then I could do more art in here. Ah, just kidding. It's good to get outside, like I said. Hot 
highlight some of these stones here. Just a few here and there. Here is a Tuscan red. Gonna use that for this old barn back here is really cool to me. Yeah, it's fun to just kind of experiment with new techniques. This might be my favorite new technique because it kind of opens up avenues for, oops, I broke my tip. Opens up new avenues for exploration, I guess you could say. I think it's important that we never lose our sense of, of curiosity like we did when we were kids and we asked our parents, you know, what's that up there? Oh, it's the moon. Well, how does it stay up there? And, you know. How's the earth stay where it is? And, or other questions we may have asked when we were children. Broke a couple tips of my black colored pencil already. That's all right though. I always buy more. There's no shortage of art supplies in America. I have noticed that. Hobby Lobby, Walmart now of all places. At least the Walmart I go to, you can buy like 24 by 30 inch canvas there. And maybe they just do that because it's an art community, but I'll tell you what, art is, art supplies are to be found everywhere and at a very good price. Part of the reason, main reason why I wanted to do these art demos is to inspire others to make art too. So if you're, you know, especially if you're a little older in age, maybe you're retired. Not saying you're old, but I don't think you're old. I don't, I don't think people are old until they have reached their, you know, 80s and 90s, and I say that in a very respectful way. But uh, I tell you what, you know, if you got some time on your hands and you and you want to just do something new, some of the, some artists have found out that's that's uh, that's when they found out that they were artists later on in life. Just uh, trying out something. So Wild Tomato, if you ever get to Door County, make sure you go, check it out. You will not be disappointed. This is my thinking pose right here. Scratch my chin like that. If you ever see me doing that, I'm contemplating. That's a good word for thinking, pondering. And it makes you sound smart. Throw a little bit of definition in here. Because this building back here is also made of, well, this one is primarily made of old stones. There's a lot of buildings like this in Door County. Just as you drive by, you can really see a lot of old buildings. And sometimes they don't have roofs anymore. They're just an old foundation somewhere. It's really cool. Went to Washington Island, which is the very tip, minus Rock Island, of course, of Door County. And it was great. I had a great time. Felt like a kid again, going across the, uh, riding the ferry with my wife. Yeah, we had a blast. We have a lot of fun just doing the simplest things. Put a little more yellow here. This is the section of the Bach music that makes me feel like a king, sitting at a banquet table. 
Maybe one of these days I'll go to Pizza Ranch and play this really old lute music, just this background music as I eat my food. Maybe my wife can hold a cluster of grapes above my head or something as a joke. I don't think she'd want to do that. Hopefully she didn't hear me say that. She thinks I'm funny when I'm not trying. I had another friend tell me once that at least you're funny at some point. He said, there's a guy I know that he's not funny when he's trying to be, and when he's not trying to be, he's just never funny. I think it's great to have some levity and have a little bit of humor in life. I think we really need to have some humor in our lives the way this world is, right? Especially when we're tempted to take ourselves so seriously. I had one guy tell me once that, you know, I really liked your art, you know, a certain time ago in your younger days or whatever. And, you know, I'm sorry, man, but that is just not what I'm into whatsoever. I said, hey, don't apologize. I'm not going to float everybody's boat. If Bob Ross doesn't float everybody's boat, then neither am I. Broke a tip again. Sometimes you can turn the pencil and catch the other side of it. And so, I learned a lot, you know, painting outdoors and being around people that sometimes are just not very nice and they just make comments like, hey, starving artist. Look at that starving artist. And I look at myself and I go, do I look like I'm really skinny or something? Like I haven't had dinner? I think I'm like, I eat, people tell me I eat like a horse. So I don't think I'm really starving. Of course, I just laugh it off. Not gonna get into it with people, right? It's not worth it. They're probably like that with everybody anyways, so. But it's important for me, anyways, from where I came from to realize, hey, I'm not everybody's favorite or everyone's cup of tea and not everybody out there is gonna like me. I might remind him of somebody that did something wrong to them in the past. In particular, I had a salesman tell me that once, you know, you could walk in, they may not like you just because you look like you, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. It's like in the movie, What About Bob, you know, somebody just gives you the cold shoulder, hey, just hang up and try another phone number, right? Words of wisdom from Bob Wiley. Two kinds of people in this world. People that like the movie What About Bob, people that absolutely hate it. I understand. Ooh. I'm having some fun right now. Can you tell? It's funny, you know, when you read a book, you can go places and never leave home because you're imagining what that thing looks like, or that person, or where that person is, and it's different for everyone else. Just like we could all look at this scene, and we see what we see, but yet we don't see the same thing that anyone else sees. Like, I could see that's a house, but it's not, it doesn't mean the same thing to me as it means to you. It may remind you of your grandpa's cabin when you were a kid. I don't know anything about that, or a place that you once went, or just the fact that you see something that I don't see. It's kind of interesting how it works. It's kind of like, how well can I see something through someone else's eyes? Or wearing someone else's shoes, how do they feel about what I'm doing? Kind of putting the last finishing touches on this. I want to darken up this foreground. I just want to beef this up. What's going to happen when I do that? What's going to happen is it's going to brighten up the background. It's going to brighten up this foreground area too. Hey, Mariah, Robert, welcome. And this is like just a colored pencil stick. You know, I can just drill in my black shadows all I want now. 
I don't have to be concerned I'm going to break it because I got my fingers right toward the tip of it. And there's a lot here. There's probably like three colored pencils, you know, packed into one of these. There's a lot of volume here. Actually, to me, it feels more or less like a painting when I look closely at this picture right now. It's kind of interesting how you can get an effect from a certain kind of medium. I'm not looking at you guys funny out there, it's just how I look at the art. I want to make sure that it, I'm getting the point across that I, I wanted to uh, when I started. It actually reminds me of cabins in Door County and all around Door County, even Washington Island. And your mind almost thinks, you know, what's at the end of that road? Where are we going here? And that's what I'll leave to your, to, for you to answer. Kind of like the poem, The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. What, what road was he talking about exactly? Well, it's different for everybody. Everybody takes a different path in life. And many of the paths we take, we cannot come back on. Once that decision's made, it's been made. You can't reverse it. That's why we need wisdom in life. I told somebody today when I was really didn't know what to do, had a big issue at hand, I said, I just asked God for the answer, and he showed me. So if you're ever against, backs against the wall, so to speak, you don't know what to do, don't do anything yet, and just ask God to help you, give you wisdom on what you need to do next, before you do something stupid, right? It's always better to do the right thing first. You'll be happier in the end. All right. Oh, busted. I've had times in my life where I did constant foolish things. That's all I did was foolishness. Couldn't respect authority. Couldn't listen to authority. Finally, I got into the Bible and heard the ultimate authority. And pretty much said, hey, hey son, if you can't submit to a man, you'll never submit to God. Never submit to me. And uh, that's when I started to actually listen to authority and do what they said to do the way they told me to do it. And I'm still learning how to do that better. To do it with more of a willing heart and not do it with an attitude. When I was a little kid, I'd think, sure, I'm, I'm sitting down here, but I'm standing up on the inside. SGK, oh. Sabella says, hey dad, good job. Thanks. Glad you like. Sabella's a little artist. I was just talking to her sister Gabri, and my other daughter. And I said, she said, Bella's an artist too. I said, and you're an artist with food. A little chef. So everybody, they have their talents and their gifts. They need to share them. So God gives you a gift that's his gift to you that talent he's given you, but your gift back to him is how you use that talent. Some people don't use them at all, they just bury them. See, it's, oh, it's too tough, you know, it's too difficult. It's not. You just have to hang in there sometimes. 
And your gift back to God is how you use that talent to bless other people in whatever capacity you have. And that's what's important in life. Makes me want to take another drive right now and go see Door County's changing colors. Problem is, it's kind of dark outside, so it's not going to happen. Love you too. And from GJK. Excellent. Broke my tip again. You kids been playing with my colored pencils? You better watch it. If I ever catch you. And what's going to happen then? Probably nothing. I'll just buy you your own set, probably. I got my own little workspace in the studio, and I like the kids to have their own little workspace. I think everybody should have their own little workspace, their own little area where their mind can just, you know, like if you're a writer, you should have a space to write. Something that inspires you, something that's a place that's quiet. Maybe it's not the time, exact time to, to do that writing, but when it comes, it'll be ready to take off with it. Because I've taken times where I've written poetry, because I like writing poetry and reading it. And when I write, I go off and I write. Now, I don't call myself you know, a professional writer in that way. It's just something I do for fun. But when, once it starts flowing, it just starts flowing. So you just have to be ready when it comes. Always, always be ready. Always be ready to take on new challenges. Stay out of that comfort zone that ruins people. Comfort zones ruin people every day, I think. Just being afraid not to... You know, I don't want to try anything new. What if I fail? Well, I don't think it's failure unless you quit. That's what I think. You hear that, kids? That's right. Thanks, Kathy. Wanda, welcome. We're making some art on Facebook land. We're having lots of fun. If you ever want to have some fun, pull out some color sticks like this and start making some art. Probably about time I take a step back and see if there's anything that's outstanding that I don't want to leave undone here. Sometimes it's just the little things that can make something pop, that kind of finish the idea. A lot of times I've had paintings I was working on or drawing I was working on and somebody says, oh, that looks great. You're done, right? And I'll say, no, I'm not quite done yet. Just a little bit more I wanted to, to work on in there. And such is the way it is with an artist. Maybe somebody I could say, oh, it looks like you're finished there, and it looks like you're done working on that, and I say, no, not quite. I think we should all demand excellence from ourselves. You know, in that sense, we're being accountable to ourselves to keep putting out a um, high-quality product, whatever we produce. Everybody produces something. If you're a teacher, you produce smart kids. 
through what you teach. You're producing the next generation of, of America's workforce, so to speak. Again, this is reminiscent of a scene that you would see here in Door County right now, or many places across the Midwest. Maybe some places their colors have changed, but those colors are in full bloom right now here in Little Door County and Kiwani County. This red is so empowering, you know, it's great. Think like a genius, I like that. You could say that to yourself, look in the mirror every day in the morning. I will think like a genius today. I am a genius. Say like you mean it, right? You know, if you say empowering things, then you're empowering yourself. You should be your own cheerleader, right? Because you know what? When I step out the door in the morning, and I go to take care of work, I don't have anyone there looking at me saying, you can do it, Tim. You can do it. No, I've got myself saying that. I don't have a cheerleading squad walking around. And if I did, I'm sure my wife wouldn't be too happy about that either. You know, the pom-poms going off. Tim can do it. Yes, he can. He can do like nobody can, right? That was the best I could come up with off the top of my head. So you got to do it yourself. You gotta cheer yourself on sometimes. Especially on those Monday mornings, right? Get back into the swing of things. I like this really dark green. And there's like so much to look at in a tree. The thickest areas get the darkest, and then there's spots that just have all this light coming out from the sun, just reflecting off of the leaves. Gets me excited, can you tell? I like, I like trees. Trees are really neat. What would life be like without trees everywhere? Okay, we're getting there. Welcome, Tiffany. Thanks for the hand clap. Much appreciated. We're celebrating the beauty of God's green earth today that he's made for us to live on. And the beauty of the changing seasons. Never get tired of watching the colors change. It's absolutely beautiful. fun to use all these different colors 
reds and oranges. You know, you never use that any other time in the year except for fall. I mean, it's beautiful in the summer. I think it's beautiful in the winter. Sometimes it's a little harsh to deal with. But I tell you what, fall is a beautiful time. And things start to cool off. Fade this blue into the background here. Yeah, there we go. Hey, Don, welcome. I should say Pastor Don. Be more appropriate there. I'm so used to just saying people's first names when they come up on the screen. This is a uh, imagine a picture of Door County right now, and this is probably what it's going to look like and these cool little old buildings that have so much character. But sometimes you just gotta pull over and take a look because it's just, it's a beautiful place. So many ways, a lot of nature, a lot of beautiful wildlife. That probably just about does it for this little picture. And now the only I thought is, you know, where do I sign it? So that's that's kind of what we do. You know, my wife and I were joking around about an idea we had, which I probably actually wouldn't bring up on this program. Not because it's a bad idea, but I should be more discreet about it. But in this case, I think. Where would I sign it? Probably down here. I don't know why it is, but usually in the bottom right corner. That's what I like to do. Sometimes if it's a different situation, you sign it on like horizon lines or something like that, that always works too. That's your decision as an artist though. You can decide where you want to sign it. You can hide your signature if you want. Make it like a Where's Waldo, if you will. You know, whatever works for you. And then you could challenge your clients to say, can you find my signature? It's in there somewhere. Free painting for someone who can find my signature. Well, thank you everyone for watching. I hope you really enjoyed watching the, uh, the piece um, be made. I'll see if I can blow it up a little bit. And I'll take a photo of it too so everyone can see it, but this is uh, basically, oh, thank you very much, Julie, appreciate that. It's a, a nice fine point Sharpie, as you can see. There you go, nice black ink, that's what it starts out with, and then I was using a uh, prism. still on it looks like excellent just gonna pull out just a couple more things I see I just want a little bit more orange there because you know the little leaves will gather around the edge of the road I was just thanking everyone for tuning in and watching and you know if you want to share this with with anyone you're very welcome to I encourage you to do so. And 
this is Tim Kornowski from my art studio here in Algoma, Wisconsin. Thanking you for watching. And again, if you'd like to share with anyone, you're more than welcome to. And if you'd like to uh, maybe be the owner of one of these pieces, uh, you're always welcome to um, call or contact me for an estimate. I'll let you know. Yeah, thank you very much. Glad you like it. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I enjoy doing art for others. I enjoy, you know, at times I'll just donate pictures, you know, just like Bob Ross did on the joy of painting. And, uh, you know, it's art is a great thing to just open doors to meet new people and, and get to share what God's given me with other people. So I really appreciate everybody watching the, um, the piece of art being made from last night to tonight. If you missed last night, so you want to see the whole thing, you know, it's a couple hours, you know, or you can just watch, you know, kind of speed through it too. That's what's cool about it. You can watch little bits of it as the progress happens. Um, and then you don't even have to listen to me go on and tell you 12 stories. So, anyways, thank you everyone for watching. And uh, thanks for all the thumbs up and the hearts. This could be my daughter's, I'm not sure. But uh, probably. And uh, make sure you stay tuned for um, any other videos that we come up with in the future. And like the page, I think that's how you can get notifications when we do go live. So thank you all very much. Everyone have a wonderful evening and signing off with the fall country scene uh, in Prism.